morning, everybody. Uh, as uh, the professor told you, I'm Mohan Atar, PhD student at University of Pune. I have written this article with the help of my professor, Dr. S. S. Chopra, research guide at University of Pune. Teaching poetry in task-based method. as an art of expression of our thoughts and feelings is intimately limited with life and it appeals principally to the ear and heart than eye. It is a source of appreciation and enjoyment and develops the creative aspects of learners. Teaching poetry helps in developing cognitive and affective aspects of students and provides the awareness and understanding of cultural and social development. It leads to an all-around development of the whole personality of pupils, particularly the emotional, imaginative, intellectual, aesthetic, and intuitive sides. Sharma, 2005 compares prose to walking, moving from one place to another on the surface of the earth. He then compares poetry to dancing, rising above the surface of the earth, perceiving its relations, getting a fuller view of its reality. Arrangement of rhyme and rhythm in poetry makes it more memorable than prose. It can be defined as memorable speech. The students can increase their comprehension. They can acquire natural speech rhythms and improve their pronunciation of English words and acquire proper stress and intonation. However, what actually happens in many classes is that the teacher explains the difficult words, disentangles difficult grammatical construction, and interprets the involved subject matter. So the teaching of poetry is a prose rendering of a poem and a sketch of the bio, uh, biographical details about the poet. This kind of teaching makes the poetry lesson uninteresting for a number of students. Teacher should know that the teaching of poetry is something more than this. The aim of teaching poetry is related to those aspects that are considered essential for the development of aesthetic sense to enable students to appreciate the beauty and style of the poem and understand the thoughts and imaginations contained in the poem. Hence, teaching poetry requires some techniques, methods, and steps. Task-based method, as one of the student's centered methods, gives the teachers the opportunity to have a ready process from beginning to end in order to help them to introduce poetry into their class and enhance enjoyment of the students. Poetry in task-based method. In teacher-centered methods, lectures present, explain, and demonstrate the subject matter. But in task-based method, the students should be involved in doing the tasks. Poetry is well suited in active classrooms. It is best consumed in public. We need to hear other people talking about it. Sometimes even a professor might impose to a swift a closure on meaning without a student's fabulous intervention. The potential power of teaching poetry depends on active student engagement with both poetic language and meaning. Prabhu from Bangalore deserves credit for originating the task-based teaching and learning. According to Prabhu, tasks are activities that require learner to arrive at an outcome from given information through some process of thought. 
and which allows teachers to control and regulate that process. Flexible framework for teaching poetry. There are several effective frameworks for creating a task-based lesson. In a comprehensive framework suggested by Jane Bliss 1996, three stages were considered for each lesson. Firstly, a pre-task stage consists of an introduction to the topic and to task. Secondly, during the task phase, the students get into groups and complete the task. Then they prepare either a written or oral report to present to the class. They practice the report in their groups and finally they present the reports to the class and the teacher or other students provide written or oral feedback. Thirdly, in focus and analysis stage, the teacher reviews what happened in the tasks and highlights relevant parts for the students to analyze. In order to teach poetry in task-based method, the teacher should plan beforehand. The teacher should choose a poem with a definite rhythm depending on the age, experience, and ability of the students. The poem should be really enjoyable, and it should be seen as a whole and not in the parts. Based on Bliss framework, the first stage is pre-task stage. In this stage, the teacher should be able to create the right atmosphere for the poem, make students curious to know about the poem and state the aim briefly. In this stage, the teacher can read a parallel poem, which is a poem similar in subject matter with the poem to be taught. The teacher can ask some questions on the previous knowledge of students. If the poem to be learned is descriptive, pictures and visual images can be shown and the teacher can ask two or three questions on the picture. A short introductory talk in the mother tongue of the students about the general idea of the poem serves as a stimulus to the students to understand the poem completely. In this stage, the teacher should tell the meaning of difficult words and phrases to enable the students to have a general understanding of the poem. In pre-task stage, the teacher recites the poem while the students listen to him carefully with their books shut. This helps the students to follow the musical tone of the poem. A good teacher of English poetry should be familiar with the rhythm and intonation pattern of English language. The model reading by the teacher can help the students to experience or feel the poem in its totality. Recitation as the soul of poetry can be very effective. The teacher should determine the meaning by emphasizing certain words or using poses and share his or her performance with the class. Then she or he can ask the students what rhythm they felt from the poem. The second stage is task cycle. It includes task planning report. In task stage, the teacher hands out a copy of the poem and the students read the poem in groups. The students work on and do tasks in their groups. Different types of tasks are as follows. Each group can create a poem and each student can contribute one line. Each group can select a list of their favorite words and create another poem using those words. They can identify cues in the poem and then describe how the cues are designed in achieving identification with the position, cause, or ideas being proposed. They underline words in the poem that they find effective, atmospheric, appealing, and important to discuss the poet's word choice during the report stage. The students can use. Okay. 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 Not the last one. The third stage is a focus and analysis stage. The teacher can focus particularly on parts of the poem that may be difficult for the students and identify some tools to help students understand them. Then, when the poem has been fully explained and discussed, the teacher should read the poem once again 
this reading will have a greater effect on pupils. Conclusion. 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 Huh. Teaching poetry tends to develop the emotional, imaginative, and aesthetic sides of a student's personality. The students can enjoy poetry if it is taught well, and if the teacher can create conditions in which a poem have its fullest significance for the pupils reading it. Task-based method offers the literature instructor some of the most fundamental, immediate, active, even physical ways to engage students in learning. In this method, for a purpose, and there are outcomes to be achieved for the task. In planning a stage, they can share their thoughts with others, and in report a stage, the students to learn and give them opportunities to think and understand the thought and imagination contained in the poem. It, is full, uh, it can fulfill the key conditions for learning that enable students to appreciate the beauty of the poem. Thank you very much. Well, the paper is going to be on one of the Indo-Anglian Muslim poets. As we know, over the centuries, in Indian writing in English, we have been concentrating on the Indian writers, particularly coming from Hindu society. But this is quite different. This paper is going to be on Muslim poets, where much uh, contribution is not made. Well, this is how my paper goes. For the sake of convenience, Indian Muslim poetry in English can be divided into two periods, namely the pre-independence period and the post-independence period. Poets like Nizmat Young, Shahid Shrawardi, Humayun Kabir, who dominate the pre-independence era, deal with the themes like Indian Renaissance, Romanticism, and spirit of nationalism in their poems, mostly they imitated romantic poets like Wordsworth, Keats, and Shelley. After independence, poets felt that they must project the social evils of the society. Syed Aminuddin, Syed Amiruddin, I.H. Rizvi, Salim Piradina, Aga Shahid Ali came before us as the most significant poets of the post-independence period. They largely expressed the reality in society. Among these, Syed Amiruddin unhesitatingly emerges as one of the distinguished poets writing in English. He has occupied a significant place in the world for being a sensitive, serious, and original poet. He has devoted much of his life to retain peace and work towards peace through poetry. Today, we remember him for his award, Dow in Peace Award for Excellence in Poetry 